If you've ever been interrupted while recording audio, then today I wanna to show you how spectral editing with Adobe Audition is much easier than you would expectral. As seems to be the case with most of my Adobe Audition tutorials, this is not a new feature. This is just a new to me feature because sometimes I just need a little more time to discover these things. But this one is pretty amazing. So I'm gonna show you how it works and I'm also gonna show you some of its limitations. And my acting skills aren't great, but let's enact a scenario here. So I'm gonna click record in Adobe Audition and you can see my sound waves right there. And as is the case, while I'm recording this voiceover, I'm just such a popular guy that I'm gonna get a text message because that is a thing that happens a lot, mostly because I'm so popular. Ah, and it happened again. How frustrating. What is happening now? So let's replay some of this audio here. Right there, and as is the case, while I'm recording this voiceover, I'm just such a popular guy that I'm gonna get a text message because that is a thing that happens a lot, mostly because I'm so popular. Ah. So as you can see, I get the text message notification. If I zoom in and try to locate the text message tone specifically, over, I'm just such a popular guy that I'm gonna get, it's kind of like this whole part but the problem is that the text message tone is not isolated. It's not something I can just cut out of this audio. It's interwoven with me talking. So there's not much I could do here. I guess I could play around with some equalizers or something to try to find those frequencies, but that's where spectral editing comes into play and it's just unreal. So up here in the top, there are these two options and one of them says show spectral frequency display. And if you click that, it essentially looks like Adobe Audition has turned into Predator but what we're really looking at is just a different way of visualizing the audio frequencies. And since I have such a low, manly, masculine voice, you can see down here at the bottom, that is where all the low frequencies are. Then you got mids and then up in the highs, the areas of total black are just silence. And since most of this is just my voice, it kind of looks very organic, but there are these several points where you can see the text message tone occurred. And that specific tone that I used has two, seems like it hits two frequencies. There's a part right here, a lower one, and then a higher one up here. So if I play it from here, you'll hear the text message tone. Such a popular guy that I'm gonna get a text message. And now there are a few kind of amazing things I can do. The first one is at the top now, there's some options that look like Photoshop within Audition, and they kind of are. It's a totally different way of interacting with and visualizing your audio. The first one is the marquee tool, where you can just select part of your audio and delete it, just like you would in Photoshop with a design. Obviously, I won't want to do that, because now I've just deleted all of those frequencies right there in the middle. And then you can see my sound waves right there. And all <laughs> That does not sound great. But with something like this text message tone that is so specific, I can select that and delete that. And I'll even delete the one up here. And now it hasn't really messed with the frequencies too much. It's only gotten rid of a few very specific ones and it should sound a lot better. Over, I'm just such a popular guy that I'm going to get a text message because that is a thing that ha it sounded like a little strange, but it worked. Another option is to use this healing brush. And just like in Photoshop, when you use the healing brush and it tries to use some kind of advanced artificial intelligence to decide how it should fix an image, it's basically the same thing here. You can use the brackets to increase or decrease the size of your brush, just like in Photoshop. And you can kind of just start painting over some of those frequencies. Audition will analyze it and then it will try to get rid of them. I've had varying success with this, but when it works, I've had it sound the most natural. Mostly because I'm so popular, ah, and it happened again. That's pretty darn good. So we went from having a disrupting text tone. I'm so popular, ah, and it, to basically no text tone at all. Because I'm so popular, ah, and it happened again. And that's really all there is to it. And then you can click the button to go back out of spectral editing and just continue editing your audio like normal. If you're doing this for a video, you can then export the file and add it to your video editing software. Now this will really only work best with very easily identifiable tones, sounds, frequencies. That's why I chose the text message tone because it's so easy to see. It would work with something like a smoke detector chirp, maybe a dog bark, a car horn, possibly a siren, something like that, like a quick abrupt noise that you just need to get rid of, but it won't necessarily work with everything. So let's try this again with a different example. I just need you to say hello to my little friend as I press record, and now I'm recording another great piece of audio, and then what? 
who decided to turn on their wacky, waving, inflatable, arm flailing tube man right in the middle of my audio. That's just so inconsiderate and annoying. And oh, look, they finally turned it off. Whew, now you can hear just my good acting skills again. This little guy is just fantastic, by the way. So the reason I did that, if we play this audio back, great piece of audio, and then what? Who decided to turn on? This sounds much more in line with something like a leaf blower or a car motor or something outside that you might actually have to deal with when you're recording your audio. And if we click on the spectral viewer, you're gonna notice a few things here. So there's a line going down the middle. That's the main tone of the motor from the wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. And then beyond that is just my normal audio. Great piece of audio and then what? Who decided to turn on their wacky waving? So what you might notice is before the motor turns on, you can see solid black. So that means there's actual silence. Once the motor turns on, there's no solid black because that sound was just basically every frequency. So if I go in and I try to just cut out the main part of the motor, that's actually not gonna do very much to get rid of the sound. Audio and then what? Who decided to turn it's still in the background and obviously i can't go through then and just try and eliminate all of that static and fuzz because it's taking up so much space that it's just going to make things sound completely bizarre and then what who decided to turn on their wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man so that wouldn't work and in this case obviously you'd have no choice but to re-record your audio which ideally is what you want to do if you can just re-record that's going to give you the best results but if there's a very specific thing that happens, you're recording somebody, you're doing your own voiceover, there's a very specific sound that happens in the background and you're able to identify it, this is a pretty amazing way of just being able to delete it and save that audio. In fact, you might even be able to say you could say adios to bad audio. And speaking of not bad audio, here are a couple of other videos I have made about Adobe Audition with some cool tips and tricks. This is an amazing program. There's so much to learn and it's shockingly easy to understand once you dig into it. So check those videos out and have a lot of fun with it because it's really, really just super fun to play around with.